Was it seduction or illusion? Deception or murder? Nothing is what it seems in a town like Twin Peaks. Starring Kyle MacLachlan, Michael Anke, Laura Flynn Boyle, Sherilyn Fenn, and Joan Chen. Now you can fall back into the mystery or begin your search for the first time every Tuesday night with a new episode hosted by a panel of superfans. Watch live for the audio commentary. No one is innocent. It's Thursday night, and Netters Network talks to the streamers who have everybody talking. It's Thursday Things, Thursdays at 9 Central, 10 Eastern, on Netters Network. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Welcome to another uh, Monday Night at the Movies, uh, another double feature it is, uh, Bo Derek uh, special, and uh, there's my perfect 10, Netter of Netter's Network, how you doing my dear and what are you sipping on? I'm doing pretty well, um, I'm a little tired today because, well, it's Monday, uh, so I am drinking a uh, cran grape juice with, um, what do you call that thing, an energy drink in it. Yep. Just a half and half. Yep, and I got the other half of that energy drink over there. But uh, good, good. Uh, something to something to keep us going. But I'll tell you what, uh, these these are a couple of steamy movies. Actually, the first one is pretty funny. It is Blake Edwards. It is um, Dudley Moore. Dudley Moore. Yeah. Um, so, can we get a sound check from? Yeah. Jack? How do we sound, everybody? Let us know. Uh, Are we loud enough? Are we too quiet? Let us know, please. We're here in the same room. We need to know how we sound on the other side of the interwebs. And speaking of the other side of the interwebs, let me go ahead and start saying hi to all of you lovely folks that are here in the chat. Starting with the lovely Lady Mist. Hello, welcome. You were here first. Uh, almost 40 minutes early. Thanks so much for being here. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, right after her is uh, Lady V. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <coughs> Connie Cleary. Uh, let's see here. JPRPH1. Hey, John. Good to see you. 
Curtis Selby, howdy folks. Uh, Jedi Bill, welcome my friend. Uh, let's see, who else? That's it for, nope, Bunch just jumped right in there. Ah, uh, that's all you guys saying hi to each other. Uh, Curtis says it sounds good. Uh, Netter may be a bit quiet, so let me uh, turn that a little bit more towards you and let me double check and make sure I don't have like sound canceling on or something like that. Um, I could probably bring the mic up slightly. <coughs> Okay, uh, Netter, say something so that they can check you. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. Is that better? Yeah, how does that sound? <clears throat> I'm guessing that's probably a little bit of a boost. Okay, so, um, going to start out the way we always do, guys. Have you ever seen the 1979 film 10 by Blake Edwards? Ah, Dead Man Walking. 55. Welcome, welcome. Looking forward to hanging out with you for a little bit on Thursday night on this lady's channel, Thursday <laughs> Things. Okay, yeah, Curtis says it does sound better. Okay, that's good, that's good. Thank you. Um, uh, have you seen, uh, we're going to start with the first movie. Did you have, Did you see 10? Maybe, maybe not back in 1979, <laughs> but uh, it's been around for a good number of years, so uh, maybe you've seen it since then. What, almost 40 years now. I know I've seen parts of it. I don't think I've seen the whole movie. It was uh, quite a, a big hit. It was a huge sensation. That uh, that look of uh, Bo Derek in those braids on the beach uh, became very famous. A uh, number of posters. Uh, uh, full Playboy spread, you know. And it is not cultural appropriation. Anyone can wear a braid. Yeah, braids are, are something that every civilization has worn for almost all of history. So, uh, yeah, I'm not buying it. Yeah, some girl was attacked for wearing her hair like that um, recently. And they're saying, oh, that's cultural appropriation. It's like, no, women have worn, worn yeah. braids like forever. All different races, colors, creeds, whatever. They've been wearing it. It's not just a certain ethnic group that wears braids. Exactly. Um, I will. I will uh, <laughs> say that uh, giving a little insight to the uh, to the messed up background and psychology of little Troy. That uh, back in '79, my mother had that hairdo as well. Yep, and she had it put. Uh, had a picture of it put on a mouse pad, which I still have somewhere. Yep. Yep. She was mimicking a pose from. Uh, from the, the beat shoot that, uh, that uh, Bo Derek did. Uh, when I was really young, there was uh, something on TV, largely edited, that I think was an edited television version of Bolero, but uh, I don't know. Um, it was a long time ago. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, just last Friday, uh, we were doing uh, the discussion of cable and, you know, whatnot, and so... I saw the original unedited version on cable, and I did see the network television edit of it. And yes, it is heavily edited. There are even a few substituted scenes. Um, there is, uh, and I'll point it out, if I, if I catch it as we're watching it, there's a scene where Dudley Moore is, is, is kind of ogling a, uh, a neighbor of his who sunbathes uh, nude, uh, played by... I want to say uh, a girl who was in the adult movie industry at the time, uh, and her scenes were completely edited out, and another actress was put in for the uh, the television shots. I don't oh, know. Okay. I don't know if the uh, the television version is a is out there and available. Maybe as a uh, a Blu-ray extra or something. I have no idea. But uh, we'll be watching the original uh, the original release. By the way. Uh, you guys that are all regulars here know how this works. If you're here live, we have the link to the uh, Cosme off-stream, uh, live stream, whatever you want to call it, of the movie, so you can watch along with us. If you are here in the future, you are going to need your own copy. And This is one of those ones I recommend you absolutely get a copy of. I'd say Blu-ray. Blu-ray is probably the way to go on this one. But... Uh, you know what I forgot to do? What'd you forgot to do? I forgot to set up my simulcast. 
Oh, well. Um, you could set up a simulcast. Well, no, if you do that, does it start automatically? Because I was going to say you could do it for the second half if you want. Well, what happens is if, like, if I set the simulcast right now, everything mm -hmm. we did before this point is not there. Right. That's so, right. Oh, well. Okay. I'll have to, um, to remind myself for next time. But, um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, oh, well, thank you so much, Lady V. It's because of your tweet, uh, that, uh, uh, Dead Man Walking saw it. Good, good, good. Um, so anyway, um, the one thing I did want to point out, I, this was something I had completely forgotten until I was getting ready for, for tonight's stream. Um, when, uh, Boomer had sent me a, uh, I, this wasn't something I played on Friday or anything, but in preparation for Friday, he sent me, uh, you know, a YouTube video of uh, uh, a bunch of uh, cable ads. I think they were all for Showtime or HBO. I don't remember right now off the top of my head. And one of the adverts was for, um, was for <laughs> Blake Edwards 10. And over the, 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 the voiceover or, you know, the voiceover was, there was background music, and it was uh, uh, Ravel's Bolero. And I'm like, that doesn't seem right. I mean, you know, Bolero was a whole separate movie, right? Completely forgetting that uh, a, a big element of, of, uh, of 10 is the featuring of the song Bolero, or the song, the, the musical piece by Ravel. Um I don't want to give away any spoilers, but it's integral to the plot, let's say. Uh, and it kind of uh, pushed Bolero, you know, into the, uh, the zeitgeist of the time, kind of reviving its popularity. And uh, it was really that that, that um, um, inspired Canon to do Bolero and, you know, do another movie with, with, uh, with Bo Derek. So, um, and I've been listening to, I, I, Bolero is one of my favorite music pieces and, um, it's a very, very simple tune. It's, uh, it's, it's a single progression in C major. Um, it, it, it starts out, it starts out very pianissimo and, uh, it rises in crescendo to, uh, uh, fortissimo possible. Um, and if you know what that means, it means it starts very, very quiet and it repeats over and over a little louder, a little louder. It goes up in pitch. It, it brings in uh, more segments of the orchestra. Um, in fact, each progression starts with the uh, it focuses on a, a different instrument. It starts. Well, of course, there's snare drum through the whole thing for the beat. But it starts out with the, the first flute, the first clarinet. In the first bassoon so you see it's getting a, a richer and richer timbre as it goes a clarinet right oboe um by the time you well tenor saxophone by the time you get to trombone you're like the hair on the back of your neck is standing on end and then you're, you hear a guy say that's to be the bells <laughs> it's okay you know actually that's not a bad analogy the way it builds that's actually a great one but this is it starts so mellow and it there's this I, I the way i would have to describe it is a nice night at the beach but you're you're sipping drinks and you're having fun with your friends and as the night's going and the the, the the booze is flowing and you get a little bit more loosey goosey and it gets a little bit and it gets louder and louder and then you really have a party right well um let's just say it's a very uh sensuous piece and uh they, they use it to its full advantage in uh in both of these films so uh i think yeah see curtis knows what i'm talking about um uh no, you know, that's, I, I totally understand, you guys, uh, this is a long night when I do a, a double feature, you know, you figure it's a minimum four hours, but you know what, you're on you time, you know, you hang out as long as you can, and we super appreciate you, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get us started, because, as I said, it is a, it is a double night. feature, 
So um, if you are hanging out with me in Cosme, I see a bunch of you already there. I see Jedi Bill. Oh. I see... Yeah. Uh, Cosme would help, wouldn't it? Yep, yep, yep. I see JPRPH1. And I see you. No. <laughs> and, well, not uh, yet, because I haven't joined the room. Right. And... No, I was doing the romper oh. bumper stomper boo thing. Yeah. Oh, romper room? Yes, exactly. Um, and I have the wrong mouse in order to start. Okay. So I'm guessing that you guys are all just going to be watching in, 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 in Cosme. But if you're not, if you have your own copy, we're starting right from the zero, zero mark. In five, four, three, two, one, play. And, of course, this is an Orion picture. Oh, I remember this opening. I love Orion. Whoops. And I just lost my earpiece. So I can't hear the movie. There we go. Um... Don't know how well you know um, Dudley Moore, but he was a very, very talented musician, um, in addition to uh, being a, a very comical actor. Um, for all I know, this could very well be Dudley Moore playing. I don't know. And um, as I mentioned, this is a Blake Edwards film, so you have to expect that Julie Andrews, his wife, will uh, be a prominent character in here. You may also recognize Dee Wallace from uh, many of your favorite 80s movies. The Howling, E.T., Cujo, Critters. Dudley Moore, uh, if you want to see a great Dudley Moore uh, film, <coughs> Arthur. I'm sure at some point I will be doing a watch party of that one, too. Um, I remember him from Arthur as him being a really drunk, self-centered, selfish jerk. Yep. Yep. And the whole point of it is uh, his father humbling him because he is so spoiled. Uh, blow up the candle before you set someone on fire. Yes, Jesus. exactly. Julie Andrews, an incredible voice. That's a lot of candles. I know, right? That's why they make numbers. Because you put that many candles on my cake, it's going to burn down the house. <laughs> Problem is, the way birthday candles work, if you have enough of them, by the time you get to the last one, the first one is already burned halfway down. Another reason why they have numbers.
<laughs> I like surprise parties. I I understand his particular um, feeling on the matter, though. The circumstances. How he's feeling about his birthday and all. movie I've seen then he's drinking and it always sounds like he's slurring his words like he's drunk <laughs> I I think that's how he's directed to play it because that's the character you end up getting typecast I mean look at uh, Dean Martin you know it was a shtick that he did and in almost every movie that's how he played it John said, I saw Dudley Moore do Rhapsody in Blue with her, uh, with the eerie Philharmonic. Yeah, he really was good. I had uh, actually forgotten. This is a, a great depiction <laughs> of composition, you know, a collaborative composition. And salute, deleted scenes. Make sure that uh, you guys all, when you get a chance, uh, go check out uh, Deleted Scenes channel uh, tonight. He's, uh, did, have you already finished or, or have you not started yet talking about the, uh, the Monday Night Mystery film? Oh, he's still on the road. Yeah, be careful. Don't uh, don't text and drive. Okay, maybe not the whole soundtrack was good. <laughs> yeah, the only problem about having a movie to rewatch is we can't fast forward. And this is um, <laughs> Julie Andrews, but just that very 70s Muzak type of tune. Yeah, I'm expecting here, there's got to be Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as I was saying earlier, um, there there is a completely different uh, television edit, and uh, I do believe this was one of the first films that was f filmed as it was filmed. They filmed alternate takes specifically for um, non-theatrical releases. 
you know, like um, obviously network television. Uh, sometimes airlines requested, you know, uh, toned down versions of films. She's a beautiful lady. Mm. <coughs> is that a Rolls Royce she's driving? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know those expensive luxury cars. Like, is that a Rolls Royce? Is that a Bentley? What is it? Very, very expensive car. He's making a rash decision to actually follow that car. I don't know what he hopes to accomplish getting married. Does he get into an accident? He gets with an a accident cop. with a cop car. <laughs> well, now he's got to step back in. <laughs> <laughs> John points out that not only is it a Rolls, but it has an 8-track. <laughs> yes. He's so short. I mean, I thought yes. he was short. He, he, yes. <coughs> you guys recognize the groom? <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to ruin it. <coughs> you recognize the father of the bride? <laughs> right. He, wasn't he the, the mayor or whatever in, in Benson? Uh, governor. Governor. Yeah, that's what it was. Governor. Just because he doesn't have the registration in the car doesn't mean he doesn't have one. Yeah, ouch. That's just an ouch. Yeah, because those cop cars were bricks. Uh. He's trying to move it. All because he decided to follow the bride. Well, I know the guy who plays her husband always plays a doofus. Uh, not always. <coughs> it's Sam Jones. Flash. Ah. Yeah, like I said, he always plays a doofus. Oh, he wasn't a doofus. He was the hero. <laughs> he was a doofus hero. Okay. He's a football player. Kind of knock something over, isn't he? I can't watch.
It's like things like that is just cringe. Yeah, but it is a comedy that's kind but of. It's like not intense. only did you wreck your car, you just wrecked somebody's what? True. You're an a hole. Yes. It's kind of only focused on uh, himself, really. Because that makes it worse because it's a Beverly Hills police I'm, car. I'm presuming that just means they're... Overly polite? <laughs> no, probably overly... Well, don't you remember uh, the movie with Eddie Murphy, uh, Beverly Hills Cop? Mm. They're overly polite. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'd forgotten. So is she supposed to be his wife or something or girlfriend or what? don't know. I mean, they have different last names. Taylor and Weber. Not all women take their husband's names. I know. That's why it doesn't really <laughs> tell me anything. <laughs> wonder what I am now. I'm a rooster. Yeah. I mean, my daughter didn't take her husband's name when they married. Okay, that's brutal. You'll just screw things up in the kitchen? It's like, seriously? I want to do my share. Go play the piano. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, he's a sleaze. No doubt about it. Oh, hey, Big Al. thing you miss is Dudley Moore wrecked a wedding in his car. And now he's playing a peeping Tom. Um, Big Al's getting his 10 word review for uh, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare done. Look forward to that. <laughs> they do make such devices. Uh, they may just be going over there because he's got money. That's an excellent point. Some girls just want the money. They figure, I'll be nice to the guy. I'll give him what he wants. He'll give me money. He'll Maybe me not present. even the money, just the amenities. I'm so glad she married Blake Edwards. That's all I got to say. Oh, because of the boobies movie? Oh, yeah. And and uh, it's cold in there, too. <coughs> Okay, they're just shacking up. <laughs> I 
<laughs> hey, Matanui. Oh, Matanui's the rooster. Okay. Hmm. I never liked the word broad. Yeah, it's not the nicest of terms. <laughs> yeah, no problem, Matanui. Heck, I'm in there as something other than myself, if I'm not mistaken. I am an anonymous cat. He's going to look up broad and he's going to find wide. This looks pretty bad. It does. Too late. Okay, I'm sorry. I can't agree with him on that one. He, he really was. <laughs> yeah, at this point I'll be going, you know what? I'm leaving. Have a nice night. But I get the impression she enjoys this sparring with him. See? I think I'd better go. Yeah, because it went too far. That really is funny. Okay, 50 bucks and an apology, and I get to call you abroad. If you ever call me abroad, I'll probably give you a fat lip for it. I don't really... Unless I'm singing a Frank Sinatra song, I don't use the word broad. No, but you do use the old-fashioned term gal. Gal, yeah. <coughs> because guys and gals, right? That in no way is, is derogatory. It does imply youth. Did he just lock himself out? Uh, probably. Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to... Subtitle? No, do, you're right. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Jedi Bill. I um, I don't have. There we go. Sorry about that. No, nope, darn it. Let me try that again. No, just. Oh, damn it. 
Now I've closed it. Shoot. Oh, Hold wow. on a second. <sighs> this is what happens. Come on. All right, guys. Sorry about that. again because we sorry everyone complete lack of skills oh no it depends on the skills <coughs> I will get us back to where we were give me a second Close enough. All I right, I'm not thing. touching anything. It's like he locked himself out of the house. You could tell he's English. He said bollocks. I'm a klutz, Bill. That's what happened. I was trying to adjust the screen and I ended up closing the whole window. Anonymous Rooster, this movie is 10. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's Matt Anui, by the way. He's, huh. he's in both chats. Oh yeah, this is 1979. This was probably before cable, so there wasn't anything good to watch on TV. You had to get your jollies by. <laughs> ah, and she knows she's being watched. It's like, how did she know she was being watched at that moment? I get the impression that whether she was or not, she was hoping she was. She imagined she was putting on a show. Those are the days where you had to pick up the receiver and wait for a dial tone. Yes, I remember yeah, those youngins, days. It was buzzing that was in your ear let you know it was okay I to make a phone call. Those days. <laughs> I'm just trying to call him. And that buzzing noise means the line is busy. Yes. Because there were times he, they tried to call, somebody else was picking up the phone. So is old dude uh, gay? Could be. It would be. It would <coughs> make sense.
much. <laughs> Right? So, long and short of it is he's going through a midlife crisis. <coughs> yeah, I'm with you, Curtis. I thought I was getting old at 42. This far the other side of it. Doesn't look that way anymore. So I think I've mentioned before on streams that I majored in psychology and I was going to go into uh, clinical practice. Never finished. Uh, kind of lost interest in uh, that particular field. Kind of lost respect for it, to be quite honest. But that was a, a great scene where, you, rare, rare instance where the, the psychologist has real insight. You're the one who crashed the wedding. Right. <laughs> Yikes. That's a way to be positive, Curtis. The dog, at least, is 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 cool. <laughs> Yikes! Yeah, even the dog's not digging it. <laughs> the song's not bad. <coughs> it's also not good. But at least she's got a decent voice. Oh yeah. Look to my ear? <laughs> I know. Okay, so lyrics leave a little bit to be desired. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I think that tray is way too heavy for her. I know, it's almost, she's almost holding it down to her knees.
Where, where are you going? That's a fireplace. <laughs> My gosh. I mean, it's got to be a struggle because walking bent over like that's got to hurt her back to begin with. She knows. <laughs> oh, oh. And like the it dog goes me. running. It's like, it wasn't me. Why? Why would you beat the dog? Because somebody else farted. <coughs> I think the implication is they blame it on the dog. And they exaggerate for humor's sake. Okay, take care, Deleted Scenes. Everybody, make sure you go check out uh, Deleted Scenes uh, movie review. Uh, well, if not later tonight, then tomorrow. Yep, Big Al did a 10-year word review on the uh, the movie we just watched on... Uh, uh, yeah, Dawn of, the, yeah, Dawn Dawn of, of the, the, Dead. the Dead. Yeah, I mentioned that last night on Geeky Geezers. It's like, well, it was his first time watching it. it yeah, why sense. not? Makes perfect sense. <laughs> but now I know it's the father's name, and now he's going to go make yeah, a dog. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a cringe element to uh, to this guy. <laughs> Gee, suddenly my 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 tooth uh, is sore. I need to see a dentist. Well, what's funny is when this sort of thing backfires on people, where they fake being injured, uh, injured or sick or whatever, and it turns out, oh, you do have a problem. We got it. Yeah, it's like, oh, you got five cavities and. Da -da -da. Like the grill. Yeah. <coughs> oh, for crying out loud. <coughs> Why bother answering the phone if you're not going to actively take a message? Because it was making noise and he wanted to silence it. So you pick <laughs> it up and hang up. Then leave it off the hook. Leaving phones off the hook was uh, what you would be the equivalent of uh, turning off your mobile. Unfortunately, though, after it's been off the hook for a while, you'll hear this little nick, 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 noise. Remember that? Yes. And it's like, uh. Oh. I hope that's a stunt man. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> he just fell fell down the cliff and tore his pants yeah I, I should certainly think so oh I I would not want to live on a hill he's probably wearing dress shoes oh so he's getting no traction at all. Yeah, he's definitely wearing dress shoes. But he's also on an incline and has nothing to hold on to. Oh, look at that. Up. He's torn through the, the, the front of his pants now. That's what I said. He tore his pants. Oh, see, see I thought you meant like a split in his pants. Yeah, they're all torn up though. <laughs> Uh, 
the time he gets back up there, the phone will She's going to have hung me. up. Yeah, exactly. She's probably held out longer than, than is even reasonable. Damn it. Oh, he was so close. He was so close. If he hadn't fallen the second time. Oh. <laughs> When was the last time you were in New York? Now, is he faking that? Out? No. Okay, judgmental much with? Yeah, I know. Okay, let me know when that's done. Needles. You know what's what's wild is you usually don't get in. You go in for a <laughs> checkup. The dentist doesn't right away start doing all the work. He'd make an appointment for later for that. Unless she doesn't have anything going on. Is he done with the needles, dear? Big T. Needles huh. gone? Oh, uh, Yeah. It's like I expected him to do more given how many he had to do, but I guess they kind of abbreviated it. Yeah, this is what happens when you screw around. In fairness, though. If they're as bad as he says, he would have been having problems soon anyway. Well, the other thing is, he didn't wait for him to get numb. <laughs> so that was about 10, 11 years earlier. Oh, is that supposed to be the wife? I don't know. <sighs> and, I mean, again, this is a... He's all hung up on a married woman. So yeah. it really is, just like his, his shrink said. You know, he's doing a whole lot of projecting. <laughs> yeah, forget like, it. Yeah. <coughs> you gotta actually try and eat? I doubt it. Oh, he's in the diner. I don't see how. <laughs> and he's only puffy like that because he has Whew, uh, excuse me bless you he has uh cotton in his cheeks right which i haven't had a dentist put cotton in my cheeks for an after procedure since i had my um wisdom teeth removed right for dental work i've never had cotton stuffed in there for after Oh, oh, oh no, oh no. Yeah, yeah, I knew that was coming. Oh. He doesn't feel that? Not down his chin, he doesn't. It wasn't until it was seeping through his sweater that he felt it. It's like this guy can't catch a break. It's because he's a dumbass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it 
<laughs> Let's be honest, the only reason I know what he's saying is because I have the subtitles on. <laughs> and in fairness to her, she didn't know he was going to a dentist. Ooh, Jim Beam. And now they're both going to get a busy signal. Right. When you're calling each other at the same time with a landline. Yeah, there's no call waiting, really. I mean, there, there was. I mean, the phones we had when I was growing up, you could have another call come through, but I can never figure out how to switch over to the other <laughs> call. <laughs> he puts a glass under his chin as he drinks. Oh, and he's taking it with alcohol. He's going to be looped. Oh, he spit it out. <laughs> okay, if I called you and you were like, uh, 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 I'd be like, are you, are you okay? having a stroke? Yeah. And the fact is, I'm sure you could get out no's and yeses well enough to be understood. Okay, he needs to change that sweater. The kid really doesn't care. Right. He's alternating between glasses. Well, yeah, because you got to drink what you spill, right? Oh, that's gross, though. I mean, if it's a really good wine, you don't want it to go to waste, right? I just, I thought that was actually kind of clever. <laughs> Stupid, but clever. You start doing that a Friday night last call. Yeah, no, see, I would. I'm cutting you off. Why would you do that? Uh, well, uh, why? Why would you do that? You wait until you can taste again if you're going to drink a decent wine. Yeah, and the cops are going to come see what he's looking at and arrest him for perversion. Yeah, that does look bad. <laughs> He's trying to say, I'm Weber. <laughs> I'm a dentist. <laughs> I am Weber. Oh, the pill's kicking in. I would just take out my wallet and show him my ID. Dumbass. This is what happens when you Do mix... Do start writing on his penis. Painkillers <laughs> and alcohol. He lifted up his hand with the pen like he was going to start writing on the police officer's... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and they're like, oh crap, now they understand. <laughs> Pain pills and alcohol don't make you go, you could have fooled me. I I was trying to say, right? Almost wish, I, I'm, why is he driving? He's probably going to go try and see Anne, who's there, going to see him. <coughs> Ah, good point. She's on her way to see him. Just like the phone. They're calling each other at the same time. Getting a busy signal.
Oh, he he went across the way to the neighbor's house. I see, I see. I mean, he's drunk and high on pills. He has no freaking clue what's going on, so he's not in... No, but she's going to look through that telescope, and she's going to see him, and she's going to be pissed. See, this is... This is a great movie. It really is. You know, Mary Poppins with no bra. It's awesome. Uh, I don't even care about these girls. It's Mary Poppins. Oh, he's nooking too. Well, it's what you do, you know. Okay, you see the problem here? Neither one of them has the, the thing pointed at each other, so they can't even see each other. <laughs> what, are they exclusive? I, I don't know. I mean, I got the impression she was friends with benefits. I kind of did, too. It's not like they're married. Yeah, but if she really is his girlfriend and it's exclusive, you know, if you have a girlfriend, then you're exclusive to that girlfriend. Uh, then you shouldn't be I don't around. know. They're in Beverly Hills, you know. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't think he was that far away. Why did he drive there? You'd think he could have walked over there. Well, honey, it's like, you know how our neighbor behind us is right behind us? Yeah. I'd still have to drive around the block to uh, get to their house. I guess so. But I feel like he fell on the way to the guy's house. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Her name was Ann. Okay, I guess that's Sam. Okay, first of all, y'all need to change your clothes because you're a hot mess. He really, really is. Samantha Taylor. <coughs> and I don't want to talk to you. Oh, by the time he actually does talk to her, he'll be slurring. Well, it's already slurring, I guess. Phone books for you youngins it used to be a thing. Yeah, that was how you Google up uh, phone numbers. In an and he's looking book. at the yellow pages, so those are all businesses. The white pages for residents, yellow pages were businesses. It's true. It's true. How is he able to even punch? phone number was as messed up as he's going to Mexico <laughs> he's going to go crash her honeymoon <laughs> oh I didn't think about that Mananui I guess that explains why I have usually the same Yeah, because I did clear my cookies recently. Otherwise, I would have been a Jaguar or something. Got a rotary dial. My gosh. Yeah, for you youngins, that's how people used to make phone calls. Yeah, in 79, they were just starting to do the whole uh, number pad thing. And even then, you'd hit the button and it would still go through the duh, 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 duh. Yeah. Because when you did the, uh, the rotary, you'd put your finger in the number, then you'd have to dial it all the way around to the, the, uh, the top, release it, and as it released, it would go duh, 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 until it went back to the, that number. And then you choose the next number and do the same thing. And if you didn't do it the whole way, it didn't do, do that number and you had to start all over again.
Now it makes me wonder if it was actually filmed on location in Mexico or if this is just another part of California. Like, yeah, you because know, where the heck is that? Oh, it's probably still California. Although, look at the at, looking, looking at those streets. Could be either. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know left coast at all. Okay, are you hearing a tapping noise? No. Is anyone in the chat hearing a tapping noise? Because I'm hearing one through my earpiece, so I don't know if it's just my earpiece is going bad and that's why I'm hearing tapping, or there's something going on. Is he still drunk? That's what I was just thinking. I mean, in fairness, depending on where he is in California and where he landed in Mexico, it could be a very short flight. Dude needs to lay down. I think he's about to. <laughs> Yeah, just what I need. More booze. What the heck? They, they should both have been able to see each other directly in front of them. <laughs> he fell asleep right on the door jam. He's a hot mess. Yes. Where's the suitcase? Or didn't he have one? He may not have had one. Or he left at the airport. I mean, the fact is, he's a wealthy man. He could just buy a change of clothes. <laughs> yeah, it was. He's bummed out his mind. Leave him it alone. It was a, a certainty that that's what was going to happen. How do you fish in water like that? I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense. You'd really have to cast out beyond the waves, and it's still going to get washed ashore. Hmm. Okay, I'm not hearing the tapping, clicking noise anymore, so I'm not sure what it was. <laughs> well, I'm five foot four. <laughs> He's a certified well. imbecile. Well, you'd have to bend down to do that. Yeah, right? Swing low. <laughs> He's like, what the heck's going on? He's like, where am I? He does have other clothes. <laughs> 
He may not even be drunk anymore. That's just him trying to get across the bridge. How does he even know that, that is she even at this resort? I d oh, um... He's going to where the father said that him and his wife always went. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Buenos dias. <laughs> Some amphetamines. So what, the bartender can't give him a coffee? And that is a very young Brian Dennehy. Yes, it is. That's a double brandy. Looks like a single to me. I like how you bartend, Netter. Yes, you do. That's why I used to make your drinks for you. I don't know why you had me stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does that make it a quadruple? Yeah, because there's no way that's a double. And the idea of drinking a brandy that fast? Ugh. Well, it's a waste of a good brandy. Right? You enjoy it. You sip it. Well, you do. I don't like brandy. Well. Six five five, not five five five. So why'd you hang up the phone? Shouldn't you have waited? Like the duck. Double down? <laughs> it's the same as the other ones. Well, because he'd already finished pouring the double by the time he said better make it a single. Too late. <laughs> he looks a little like uh, our buddy Stan. Yeah, he kind of does. <laughs> Next time I see him, I'm going to have to tell him. You know, you look like a very young uh, uh, Brian Dennehy. There's Flash Gordon and the Flasher. <laughs> it's a couple of days, a couple of weeks. You need to find yourself? Yeah, he needs to find himself between two fun bags. She's not going to fall for his trap. No. Well, she shouldn't. If <laughs> 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 you wonder how long Don's got to be on shift. Yeah, and for that matter, how long they've been there now. 
you figure not long since he's still there. He's not unconscious, and they had just arrived, and they're still there dancing. Honey, alcoholics can be functioning. My brother was one. Well, true. My father was he one. He hasn't been very functional, though. <laughs> My understanding is they had considered um, Kim Basinger and Tanya Roberts for this role. Bo Derek's role, not Dudley Moore's role. <laughs> that would have been a weird movie. Well, this is a weird movie. <laughs> I mean, seriously, what was the game plan here? You're yeah. going to go try and make time on a girl who's on her honeymoon. Well, uh, guys have been successful before. Well, I mean, I know how this movie goes, so, I mean, that kind of puts a different slant on it, but <laughs> still, at this stage in the story, it's like, and he's got to be having the same thought, right? Oh, yeah, it was 1979. Disco was still a thing. Yeah. Yeah, you have no authority. I like that. I mean, he's right. When I've had enough brandy, I sleep pretty weird. Down the hatch, yep. Why is she chewing on her straw? Oh, I guess she was trying to suck through the thing. D. Wallace. That's not rude. Yeah.
Ooh, careful. Well, she falls over, she'll land on the bed. And it's still a long way down. They're both going over. Okay, I guess it it's wasn't like, as bad as I thought. Like a foot and a half. Couldn't tell if that was a person or a plant. I know she's like regretting it. Oh. No, it's the alcohol! No, I just don't want to argue with you. Mm, I just realized I need something else to drink. Only when I drink. <laughs> you couldn't get it up? <laughs> I didn't think women had that problem. No, I guess she's feeling insecure because... Because he can't. At least another guy before him couldn't. He was probably gay. That's dumb. <laughs> so it means he was able to Fire it off three more times, at least. Well, I figured he was gay, and that's why he couldn't. <laughs> okay, so she's hanging all of her self-worth on this, and it's... really hitting her ego but the fact is you know between alcohol he's you know obsessed with someone else he's you know got all this emotional baggage going on it has nothing to do with her That's what happens when you're near the equator. It gets hot pretty much year-round. Well, even in the U.S., the sand gets really hot. Yep. Gravis throws, throws him down. For crying out loud, I understand it's got to be uncomfortable, but I don't think the sand gets any hotter than the ambient temperature. Have you, like, never stepped on hot sand with your bare feet? I haven't spent a lot of time on many beaches, no. Why is he wearing a sweatsuit in Mexico? I, who knows? Can I soak <laughs> my feet in it? Ah, Bloody Mary, yeah. 
person's sunburned. Ooh, yeah. I feel really bad for them. I've been that sunburned. See, he's hot too. Oh, come on. PJ, hey, hey how's PJ. it going, my friend? Good to see you. The business manager is here. I guess I'd forgotten how creepy he is throughout this movie. Yeah, it's like I've never seen this part of the. The only I saw one part where she came out of the water and was like, you know, looking all sexy and everything. And I think that's the only part of the movie I ever saw. And I think it's because they were showing it a lot in commercials or something. Oh, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> They're all the promos. <laughs> he forgot he'd sent him for a drink. Bloody Mary, man, that would be nice. He's trying to get him to get on my back. <laughs> <laughs> that is good service. Of course, he's wearing sandals. Well, because he works for the resort, so he would know to wear sandals in the sand. I think that's why they're called sandals. And that guy out there is going to be sunburned down to his waist. His knees down are going to be white. Probably better than the other guy out there, too. It's like, what, so three guys are just going to stand in the water up to their waist? For exactly and... the same reason. Cool off their feet and drink. <laughs> Why do last names first? To Tripoli. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we've got the Bloody Mary in the center. Uh, looks like some sort of pineapple-y drink of the guy in red shirt. And something coconutty on the left. Yeah. <laughs> You're an English fella. Couldn't tell by the accent? That's all right. <laughs> I missed it. Why did he say he needed to be an English fellow? I missed it too, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's getting sunburnt on his shoulders. Well, you never know. Maybe these people are wearing that, uh, what do you call it, uh, sunscreen or whatever. You could see his shoulders were all red. And she's not oily. So you know she's not But we saw it. her putting it on. And her tan is even. She, you, you really think she got that from being out in the sun, honey? Yeah, I don't know. Well, if those bees stay on her back, she's going to end up with little, little marks. marks. Yeah. No, but she's got enough of a tan on her back that it won't make a difference anymore. She's not going to get that much darker. <coughs> so now you're just fantasizing. Right, exactly.
You're going to go for a swim in your sweatsuit? Sounds like the kind of thing you could do. Yeah, usually on a, a beach like that, you would have buoys that would, you know, mark off how far out you could yeah. go. This is how much of an a-hole he is. He doesn't bother to tell him, there's somebody out there on a surfboard. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it's true. As long as you don't go out too far, you will always just get, you know, washed back ashore. But after a certain point, you'll start getting caught up in the currents and going out. Maria, Hello, welcome, Maria. welcome. And if you guys have any interest in uh, watching the movie with us, uh, of course, the Cosme link is at the top. And we're still on the first movie. Time. There's that famous scene of her running in the surf. Yeah. In slow motion. This was, of course, the inspiration for uh, uh, Baywatch, I think. Yeah, I think this is the only part of the movie I've ever seen, is her running out of the water like that. <coughs> and the running, and the running. <coughs> Pretty smile. Yeah. See, now if I were her, I'd go up to one of the uh, resort yeah. peoples and go, My husband went out on a surfboard a while ago. Yeah. And I haven't seen him since. Can you send out a boat or something? To check the water. Yeah, look how red his shoulders are. He's sunburned. Yeah. And yeah, that is out too far. In order to film a shot like that, they would have had to take him out on a boat to do that. Did he actually go get a boat to try and save this guy? I have no idea. I It's been almost 40 years since I saw this movie. <coughs> And if you're on the surfboard, you gotta imagine that water's still going at your face. Oh, jeez! Dumbass! And now they both lost the boat. No. Oh, he's probably exhausted. He has heat stroke. Well, he's tied. He's tethered. No, I mean... Oh, the surfer dude. Yeah. It's like, uh, there's something. <laughs> and this when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, right? <coughs> Ooh, he just pulled him up Wedgie. by his shorts. Yep.
wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at this point, you should at least get a free drink out of it. Right? <coughs> exactly. Where's that? Where's incommunicado? <laughs> From Cognito. <laughs> now, I wonder if the actor actually knows how to play the piano. Which actor? Definitely more. Oh, absolutely he does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is absolutely him playing. I mean, a lot of times they have actors faking playing instruments. Oh, he was he was a musician before he was an actor. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of pretty. Is that D. Wallace again? Yeah. Is that the girl he tried to sleep with? Yes. Mr. Londell's groovy movies. Yes, yes, uh, he he's quite an accomplished pianist. Apparently, last night with D. Wallace, though he didn't have a very accomplished. Uh... Never mind. I'm not going to finish that joke. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Now, I don't know this piece, so this could be, you know. Just him winging it? Yeah, it could just be something of, of his, something he composed, or I don't know. Still thinking about her running around the beach. Yup. And the running. And the bouncing. And the hair going clickety clack. Yeah, John is saying that when he was uh, with the Erie Philharmonic, he played Rhapsody on the piano.
implies he remembers her. Ah! Yeah, it's like, does this guy work 24-7 or something? He's on in the morning, know, he's on right? in the evening. Well, in fairness, he probably has an eight-hour shift, and he comes on in the evening, so. And what, he's going to just say, I want to make sure you're okay? Uh... She's like totally yep. not wearing anything. Yep. And just exposed herself to this guy. Well, just her backside. <laughs> okay, maybe her front side a little bit too. You might want to close the door. How rude. Right? Oops, sorry about that. Dudley Moore was one of the four writer-performers in the comedy review Beyond the Fringe from 1960 that created a boom in satiric comedy. There you go. Yeah, wild coincidence. Imagine that. <coughs> ouch. Older? Ooh, ouch. Yep, he was there. He knew. Elevator okay. music. She's got to be, what, about 30? I guess, yeah. He's only 41. He's only 10 years older than her. Really big enough. Sounds like a great dad. <laughs> and why is her hair up in that towel? She's got little tiny braids that so wouldn't be very wet. Who knows? For people that, uh, you know, back in the day when I was, you know, when this hairstyle was popular, um, people that I knew had gotten it, so it was a pain in the butt to get all those little braids out afterwards. Yep. <laughs> Not to mention that all the hair you lose over the course of time you have those braids in come all at once. Oh, yeah. It's like um, I saw this video on this girl who had dreadlocks, and she combed them out it took hours yep. in fact she had um in fact for one girl i think it they actually ended up doing it over several days because it was a lot of them and they're really bad and it was like her and her mom trying to comb these things out then she uh, recruited her friend to help out and she ended up with a ball of hair that was almost as big as she was I mean, what's really crazy is this seems to be working out for him, and it's like, 
what the heck's going on here? Now, there's another thing. She goes further into the water so that they're, like, even. Now he's probably standing on a box or something. <laughs> yeah, because you know she's a lot taller than he yep. is. That's why you can't see him from the knees down. Yes, but you can see his waist is much higher than hers. Yeah. Yeah, she's got a point. How come when guys get older, they look more distinguished? When a woman gets older, they don't always look all that distinguished and pretty and stuff. I don't know. I now, this does not apply to all women. Some women look fantastic yeah. when they get older. Yeah. <coughs> D. Wallace for one. Bo Derek for two. Raquel Welch. Raquel Welch. Netter. <laughs> I mean, Raquel Welch had legs for days. Even well into her 70s, mm -hmm. 70s, 80s, it's like, man. <laughs> so she's cultured. Here it comes. <laughs> there you go. Like, okay, I'm going to take that joint now. That's a fair description, yeah. Okay. Sex, dance, drinking, it all works. I think that's an imitation. If that wasn't, that is. <laughs> so basically she's going to cheat on her husband. I guess. like uh, I'm, I'm suddenly very uncomfortable and I can't walk properly oops and uh, Curtis Fun, but I'm going to sleep. I will leave this playing for. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Curtis. This is arguably the best part of the movie. And of course, I mean for Ravel.
there's a lot of iterations. It goes on for about 15 minutes, so. Oh, she's got it timed. All right. If she insists. Right. But his isn't. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> well, she said it was better for her on top, and now he just took that away from her. Well, she was going to beat the crap out of him with her hair if only they... she keeps. Well, bending over true, like that. If true, she sits true. straight up like you usually do when you're on top. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to be in the mood when that happens. That actually worked. <laughs> Maybe it's the universe trying to tell you something, dumbass. He's like... <laughs> this is so weird. Although I, this was a little bit less weird in the 70s, I suppose. This gives you an opportunity to think, what the hell are you doing? And she's starting it over again. Ouch. Take three. He's cold. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're married? Yeah, there's a lot of reasons why not if he really thinks about it. <laughs> 
Well, the fact is, he came to Mexico specifically for this. Yeah, this really starts putting it in perspective, doesn't it? <laughs> That's okay, you can give it away in the next movie. <laughs> That's literally what the next movie's about. Yeah, I mean, definitely a free spirit, but wow. And yeah, what was he really expecting? Hopefully he's got her, you know, uh, out of his mind and stuff. He had a little bit of okay, personal I'm growth. I'm a woman, but she is a nice butt. Yep. thing I never, I didn't like about Julie Andrews is when she sings, she nods her head a lot. Yeah. But she's got a beautiful voice. Part of it is acoustic. Part of it is uh, affectation. No, it's like every time I've ever seen her sing, yeah. she nods her head when she's when she's trying to bring out the vibrato. Uh, when she's trying to make a point. Like, I'm giving it to one man and she's nodding her head. Yeah. yeah. Yep.
mean, it's not a genuine apology, right? I used to dress like that kid when I was, well, a kid. Everybody <laughs> in the 70s did. I did too. <laughs> He's not wrong. It's like, why would she tell him to make himself at home? That doesn't make any sense at I, all. I guess she's <laughs> just being polite. She still considers him a friend. Yeah, it's like he drinks way too much. We're supposed to know who Bernie Kaufman is, I guess. So I'm guessing that this guy co-writes songs with yes. him. Yes. Mm -hmm. What, his boyfriend ran off with somebody else? Probably, yeah. <laughs> Does got I was kind of there? expecting that with the whole, you know, <laughs> go to the store and come back exchange. It's kind of a pretty song. Yeah. <laughs> Seems a little high register for him, but he probably didn't write it for himself. No, he probably wrote it for her. <laughs> yeah. See? Yeah, for her. exactly. Yeah, see what she, what Bo Derek was calling uh, <laughs> elevator music. This is uh, their show tunes. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, exactly what Mr. Landell was just saying. Unexpected. Clearly it was for her. <laughs> no. 
because she's wiser than he is. I mean, it is a good plan if you think about it. Uh, yeah, Mr. Londell, that kind of makes makes sense. <laughs> he just happens to have Bolero. And she's like, what? Looks like she's trying not to laugh. <laughs> she didn't turn out like that. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was 10. <laughs> yeah. So you guys know the shtick. Who saw this for the first time tonight? What did you guys think? So is 10 supposed to refer to Bo Derek yes. being a 10? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, it comes from the, uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the part where he was talking with his uh, shrink. And he was saying, you know, on a, a scale from 1 to 10, he said 11. He's like, you know, 10 isn't even possible. I beg to differ, but whatever. Okay, this is actually a better orchestration of that tune. comes off more as a show tune than a late 70s you know music music by Henry Mancini <coughs> that makes sense Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying, Mr. Londell. Like I said, it's been, what, 40 years? Been so long, it feels like uh, the first time uh, comedy back in the day was better, more subtle, yeah. And they, they, didn't, they didn't muck around. They wanted to make a joke, they made a joke. <coughs> Body as they wanted it to be. First time seeing it, it was good. 
A good way to spend Monday evening. Yep. Now for you night owls, uh, we will uh, be taking a quick intermission and uh, then jumping over to uh, Rumble, where I will continue the double feature uh, with the, uh, the film that Bo Derek did uh, about four years, five years later, called Bolero. Hmm. Again, this was a <coughs> canon film. We talked a little bit about it uh, a week ago uh, last Friday when we were talking about the different canon films. Uh, but like I said, I, I figured I'd save most of the talk until uh, tonight. Um, as, as good as this movie was, Bolero is not as much. You don't watch it for the movie. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, make this movie today and there, they'd have to have naughty bits every 15 minutes and, uh, the lesson more realized at the end wouldn't be there. No, you're absolutely right about that. That's absolutely right. All right. Okay. So, um, bear with me. I am going to, uh, take a quick intermission, uh, step away, get the, uh, next movie ready and I will drop the link to rumble which is where we will be very very shortly that means he's gonna pee I, <laughs> she's not wrong she's not wrong so if you are uh sticking with me i'd love it if you'd come on over to rumble and uh we will continue with the second half of our double feature and uh i will be back in just a moment Where is my brand? There we go. Uh, let's see. Give me just a sec.
back on? I must be back on. There we go. Uh, let me stop the banner. And okay. So again, I am going to be ending this on uh, uh, the YouTube. We will just be on Rumble. I know most of y'all are already there on the Rumble. But I just want to drop it one more time and uh, say good night to YouTube. Good night, YouTube. Uh...